how people learn. In one of our other sessions, we've looked at different ways of meeting people's training, learning and development needs. But in this session, we're going to look at how to really make training effective through understanding the basic stages that people go through as part of a learning process. The seven stages to how people learn. Stage one is perception. This is essentially the initial training activity that somebody does and how their senses register what's going on. So this is meaning using a combination of senses and you want to address all of them to have maximum impact. So this could be visual, audio, touch and feel and all the other senses. Try and use as many of them as possible. So this could be through a range of things, using visual aids, using visual and audio podcasts, webinars, anything that people can see and hear. Another good method for accelerated learning techniques is to actually address people's sense of touch and feel as well, even through something as simple as giving people stress toys or little bits and pieces of toys that they can play with actually during the session. Believe it or not, that can actually really enhance people's learning experience. Stage two is making sense of perception. That's evaluating and understanding the information that people are taking in. In order to really do that effectively, they need some framework in place. They need a context, they need objectives they're working towards, they need logic, rationality. For example, use diagrams or flowcharts to show how things fit together so that they can actually make sense of the things that they've seen and heard. Level three then is remembering. That's storing information in your brain, really. The brain's like a filing cabinet. Not all the perceived information is going to be remembered. In fact, by tomorrow, you may only remember 10 or 20% of what you've seen today. But that information needs to be stored, both in long-term and short-term memory. And the best way of doing that is to, for example, address key points so there's less information for people to try and remember. But remembering is no good without stage four, which is recall. That's all about bringing accurately to mind from a stimulus the information that people need. To really assist in recall, it helps if, first of all, the information is familiar. Recall aids that you can use include things such as acronyms, checklists, maybe anecdotes or associations, or examples of things that people are familiar with that's going to help them to bring those things back to mind when they need to. Stage five, then, is generalisation. That's putting all those principles that they've learned into other contexts and into practice. So the best way of making sure that people can do this is by having real examples that link to their own experiences and that actually have some meaning for them. If you're training people who work in the education sector, for example, there's very little point in giving them examples of a construction industry. They need something that makes sense to them. Stage six, then, is performance. That's actually putting things into practice. And we do need practice in order to be able to do this. For example, if you have just done your driving theory test, but you've never actually driven a car, you're not going to pass your driving test first time round. It takes a lot of practice just to be able to do things and to be able to do them well. So when you're actually running some sort of training event, you're going to need things like role plays, exercises, so that people can actually put this into practice and can give it a go. It's also really important to then give people the opportunity to use these things at work. Again, it's about reinforcing what they've learned and actually being able to do it so it makes a difference to their behaviour and how effective they are in their job role. And finally, stage seven is feedback. This again reinforces what people have learned, but it also gives them some feedback on their own performance so that they can allow for modifications, changes and improvements so they can get even better in what they're doing. It's a way of clarifying whether those objectives that they've had for their learning and development have been met. And again, it's a way of narrowing that gap between somebody's actual performance standards and their required performance standards. So those are the seven stages that people will go through as part of a learning process. For more information on how to identify people's learning needs and how to meet those needs and how to evaluate the results, see our other sessions on those topics.